before we start, I just want to say I hate this game. I hate that I love the pain it puts me through. Figure out these dang puzzles and Mr. Blow's stupid ridiculous rules. The satisfaction that you get after all the hours of enduring pain is quite special. Okay? It makes you want to smash your head on the keyboard and do yoga. If you want to put some hairs on your chest, this is the game for you. To put it in simple terms, The Witness is a puzzle explorer where you can draw lines out of circles. And I think most people will look at it that way and say this is nothing special. And the recordings you find around the island don't help with that. I am standing on the threshold about to enter a room. It is a complicated business. In the first place, I must shove against an atmosphere pressing with a force of 14 pounds on every square inch of my body. I can totally see why people will have this opinion, like whether it's the price tag or simply just not their cup of tea. I just really enjoyed exploring this Frankenstein island filled with the most creative puzzles I've ever seen. You think you will be just drawing lines the whole time, but that's just the core of how you interact with the puzzle. And once you get used to one way of doing the puzzle, the game flips it on its head over and over, consistently challenging you to beat Jonathan Blow's brain. It's almost like he's a crazy guy from Sweet Genius where just play things for his amusement, grasping for affection as he looks down at us and calls us stupid because we don't know what a Tetris block and empty blue squares mean. And the inspiration. Me, I'm your inspiration for the cake test. I haven't been this mentally challenged by a game in a long time. I kind of love it, in my wife constantly stabbing me kind of way. The puzzles are just amazing. Some of them reward you for thinking outside the box. And when you blow through a few hard puzzles, you feel like Neo from the Matrix. But then the game starts to break its own rules, which will make you grow a new vein on your forehead. And every time you think you finally got the hang of it, of how it works, it throws an elephant in the room. And you're just sitting there looking awkward at the puzzle for a few minutes. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than a few minutes. And I think that's why you don't hear music and you're surrounded by beautiful vistas. So you can calm down, you know, listen to the waves, you know, while you're trying to cure cancer. But when you complete an area, the satisfaction euphoria is unmatched. And most of the time, the solution makes complete sense and is right there in your face the whole time. But there were a couple times where I questioned how the game was trying to explain how puzzles are done. There was one time in particular where I had no idea what the solution was even after completing the puzzle. It gets pretty rough. I have spent some time on this island doing way more than I needed to to complete the final puzzles in the game. And all I'm gonna say is that there's a little bit more to this game than what you see on the surface. If you search hard enough, you'll find a lot more than just big black monoliths straight out of 2001 A Space Odyssey. You know, the space baby movie. This is not a game for everyone. I know Jonathan Blow likes to put out his work for people to find a deeper meaning behind that and this does have that. But sadly, if you don't like running into walls constantly to get where you need to go, much like life, probably not the game for you. But this game is great. Constantly fresh puzzles everywhere you go, like donuts from Krispy Kreme when the hot sign's on. I love the atmosphere that the ambient sounds give, especially when you have some good open back headphones and you're just exploring and venturing off into these different areas of the island. The visual style, even though it could be cleaner, looks like a painting. It's great. I still hate this game. Absolutely. 